Hey. Welcome back. There are some horses out there behind the house. Remember the horses you and Lisette and Ira had? Yours didn't like to sleep in the barn either. Conway moves on. Yeah, this, this game's good. <laughs> on we go. We should yeah. go to the artificial limb plant. Did you ever go when you were streaming? I looked at it. Because I got... I started getting sick, like, right there. What the fuck? It puts you out in Weird. front of it. Uh, creek runs along... Uh, the creek runs along the highway and then turns towards a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. At the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by the trees. Ammer to Fischl, Limb Factory. Yeah. I know not the exact right road, but whatever, I'll find it. It's somewhere around here. Run. It's up off, yeah, right over here. There's a bait shop. Conway pulls up to the bait shop, parking lot. Vaulted above the road on the thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live bait. Minnows small and large for stripers. Night crawlers, chips, and beer. A green flyer hangs Lucy from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a dirty parking lot sprawls unevenly into the grass, then eventually trees. The bait shop is open. Read the flyer. Computer printed type in a bold font surrounds clip art and illustrations of a TV set. The TV has eyes, arms, and legs. Its shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of exhausted nausea. A hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. TV repair, no model tool to inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Enter the bait shop. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels, rods, and snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Something you didn't do, I know. Oh, look at the tanks. The three metal tanks aren't labeled, and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely gray. The second tank is a muddy pink. The third tank is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Why would you reach in? Found his hand brushing at something roughly the size of his palm. Found his hand comes into contact with a scaly, uneven surface, and he runs his fingers along the bottom. The bead of sweat bridges the edge, bridges the inch, inches from his temple to the water's surface. Something bites his forearm. He recoils. Ugh. Conway's fingers slip through something fleshy but inert. The sensation is nauseating. Oh. As his elbow passes into the pinkish mass, he realizes he's about to be sick from the smell and pulls away. Why would you do this? This is bad. It's bad. Water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or massaged by art the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he can see something colorful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. Okay. Tremor spread from his elbow to his fingertips and up the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers. The water is running warm under his skin now. Uh, under under his skin now, and has the sensation of something about to snap. His eyes close. He lays on a rooftop. New shingles rough beneath his back, swelling in the noon sun. He is exhausted. It must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from holding stable onto the uneven surface. His wrists from breaking old sealant. His fingers from carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new ones. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. He shades his eyes within, with his hand. A beer would be good. It's barely past noon, but he's worked a full day already. What could be the harm? 
Maybe a shot at the counter. Just to get his eyes open. Then a beer. He'd offer to drive into town for lunch and stop at that place on Cumberland. The cashier pushes Conway roughly on the shoulder. He's been talking, yelling maybe, but it's all an echo now. Conway looks up, his neck stiff with pain, his right palm still tingling. Cashier points to the tank, then above to a few inch, uh, to a few to holes torn in the wall, nail holes from which an electric sign had come dislodged and fallen into the water. Helps Conway to his feet, looks at him pitifully, and returns to the cash register. Jesus Christ. Let's go to the counter. <laughs> a wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with the Sudoku puzzle. Um, Let's give out the basketball game. The cashier switches on the radio. An AM sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to be an answer or to drown out his questions. Ask about Shannon Marquez's workshop. Handwritten sign on the door behind the counter reads, TV repairs by appointment, please consult with the cashier. Cashier knocks a few times on the door, waits occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments, no answer, no answer he notices a smaller note written on the door, he reads it, then points it, to the, uh, points it out to Conway. A note? Weaver, I got your message. I have left for the old mine. Don't know if I'll see you there or what. I'm ready either way. Walk away. Alright. Well, we have somewhere to go. Sure do. Our landlord is listening to something interesting right now. Blasting opera from upstairs. Yep. It's... Okay. Alright. Man, act like these are going to take so much longer now. Yeah. Now that we're going to be exploring stuff. I'm not a fan of the new font. I don't know. I like it. I think I like the old one more. Conway brushes some dirt off Blue's hat. How's it going, Blue? Hey, you got something on your hat. Did you pick that up on the road? You like it out here, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Well... Let's, uh, head into this extremely fucked up mine. Wow, that was the entirety of scene three. <laughs> well, we're changing sets. Feels appropriate that it's a new scene. Shannon speaks into a large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Yeah, it is. It kind of is an emergency. Inaudible. But can I trust him not to just change the locks? Inaudible. Just never mind. I have to go. Sorry. Shannon hangs up the phone and puts it away. Stranger and his dog. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on and I was looking for the on-ramp to... Are you here to kick me off the property? Oh, no, no. I, I guess you don't belong here either, do you? Do you work for the power company? power company oh no no i once worked for an electrician for a few years and it but i sort of drifted on before i really learned anything for a few weeks sorry i misread it 
I get it. You're a nomad. Huh. Well, I do drive a lot. Just me and the road mostly when the sun is out. Is that your job? Driving? Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lisette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. You're making a delivery to the mine. Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery for Five Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now, I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So, I met this young lady, name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way, so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway, with... What? Weaver Marquez. Do you know her? So you saw her. Tonight. I know Weaver. She was... She's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying, and then my dad walked in the door and just came back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So maybe the Zero is down here somewhere. Maybe it is. Well, I won't mind the company. I've got business down here myself. I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or, anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're gonna go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else. We've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. Got some gear here to me measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead, do some an analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Sure, let's look around. No, Blue, you have to stay here. Blue. Blue, baby. Blue, I love you. You have to stay here. You're old. Hey. Okay. She's dead. That runs to the mine's PA system. Do you think it still works? The little light on the front of it is off. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights? Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens, coal script. You know? And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? But we have ju uh, just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed here. Here, set up that lamp of yours. I'll go unplug the ceiling lights. <clears throat> I heard the speaker back there crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something into the, mic into the mouthpiece. Well... Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. Conway rubs a finger along the surface of the mouthpiece.
Conway hums a deep tone into the mouthpiece. Conway whistles. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer, so just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense of how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy. Just say anything that comes to your head. Tell a story about something like, uh, or what did you have for breakfast today? I had breakfast with Lissette. She made biscuits. We listened to the radio. And we just sat there for a bit. Got it. it looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hoping you're ready to stoop a bit. Yeah, you're probably used to it. One more test. Just need to know if the air is breathable, or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Conway breathes and thinks about the road. Conway breathes and remembers a moment when he was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape. But keep at it for a minute. Conway breathes and visualizes a cold drink. Conway breathes and relaxes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? My leg is stuck. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's all messed up. Here. Let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Okay, there's some luck, right? We should be able to get... To ride this tram out of... Out of one of the auxiliary exits, if there are any. I think there are. What about Weaver? We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So, the controls are on your side. Let's get moving. Okay, I'll turn on the lights and we'll actually do this. Yeah. I just had to... Those moments are things that I have to... Like, I had to make Sam experience that on stream, too. It was... Because you would have left the light on and never touched that. It was very unsettling. Yeah. I... Can we 
go down the thing. I thought it was... Oh. Maybe it's the one at the bottom of this. may be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself. This whole branch was under water last I heard. How did that happen? Some careless miner or some attendant unattended machine bored right into the underground lake. Water came in pretty fast and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. Only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. There was gossip too. Trap miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut off all the lights, but then it wasn't enough. I guess it was dark when they... You lost some people down here, didn't you? We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. Doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable's still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much, or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All junk hanging around at the turntable and is from the company store. Just junk, you know. Miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place or as landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way I would, which way is which down here. It's also dim and gray. Shannon connects two clips from her signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboat, so. This is completely new. I don't remember this. We're messing with something. Pendulum in the casket. Yeah, I don't remember this at all. I don't remember this whatsoever. Shift in perspective. Touch to the light. Jump to the and get one. Going down. Oh. Yeah, this is new. Those were still down here. What was that? Look, there's a tape player down there. One of those old reel to reel setups. When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording miners' songs. Really academic, ivory tower types. None of the miners talked to them much. <laughs> you know things oh wow either I completely missed this the first time I ever played this and just completely missed that turntable thing or they've added this in to give more context to something later okay either way I have more context for something okay yeah I know nothing but this is intrigued to me so they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. Jesus, that's what it was. Then I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some coal script tokens to pay the miners for the, with for their songs. Did your parents sing? Oh, uh, yeah, they sang. Sang in the mine for coal scrubs. Dusty reel to reel tape player is stashed beneath the track. Loaded with tape but starved for power. What if we turn off the light then?
Anyway, we're gonna move on. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Yes, cancel this. Go the other way. Yeah, we didn't go the other way. Yes, must. We have to see all the ghosts. Totally intact. That would have been destroyed. What is this place? It's a recording studio, basically. Kind of thrown together, but... This is where the archivists would record, and I guess... Then they'd sequester themselves by that tape deck we found to listen to the recorded songs. Did you ever come down here? Yeah, I came here with my parents once or twice. They used to play music here, even when those archivists weren't around. It was a nice setup. Kind of rickety. Kind of dangerous. I guess, but... I don't know. I had a good energy. It was warm, sometimes. Well, that's that. So we don't end the episode on horrific screeching, like the last one. Uh, yeah, that's that. We will check out what the rest of the turntable has to offer us next time. Have a nice night, everybody. Sleep See. tight.